Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Chanel Classic Flat Medium Large in the Black Caviar Leather with the Silver Hardware. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workout, let's go to work, let's start your laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome, awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question from Gloria Boone, I contribute to my retirement plan, have investments, donate to charities, but I still feel a bit guilty buying expensive items. I always feel like I should be contributing even more to my retirement and planning better for my future. Do you ever have similar feelings of guilt about balancing all your financial responsibilities? Do you feel like some of the purchases you make are investments? How do you balance it all? These are absolutely amazing questions. Uh, all right, so let's start off with the first one. Do I ever have similar feelings of guilt about balancing all of your financial uh, financial responsibilities? Uh, I do not. When it comes to finances, uh, in our household, I end up uh, taking care of the finances. When it comes to that, I uh, prioritize everything, and I am extremely, um, I you know, I'm very organized when it comes to finances in general. I want to make sure. I mean, I have spreadsheets because I need to ensure that you know, things are going to the right places at the right time. In order for us to even fathom adding anything to our collections or buying anything that makes our hearts sing, we have to ensure that these things are being taken care of. Those being the monthly bills, uh, money into the savings account, money into the retirement funds. We also have an account set aside for the house. So if we need any type of, not necessarily repairs, but if we need anything for the house, whether it's trim, whether it's a new oven, whether it's new flooring or whatever it is. Uh, and then when it comes to charities, we contribute quarterly. So as long as all of these are taken care of and we have have money left over that most people would uh, would end up calling mad money, um, then that's when we, you know, that's when we end up buying the things that make our hearts sing, whether it's Robert and his fishing and his outdoors or myself and Lux goodies. But even with those, even with that mad money, uh, I am extremely strict. That's why I'm very frugal when it comes to certain aspects of my life. I don't buy expensive clothing. Um, I just recently started really getting into uh, the expensive footwear and I'm trying to, to put a halt on that. Uh, but there's a lot of things that I cut out of my life in order to make sure that I'm able to put the funds towards something that I absolutely, that really makes my heart sing. But as long as these are taken care of and if I'm able to buy something for myself and if I'm able to live in the now, if I'm able to feed that singing heart, then I am all for it because I know that I am being responsible with all all the other aspects of my life that um, that make being a that make being a an adult so challenging sometimes, you know, because it's not an easy, it's not an easy task. Uh, and I remember when I was younger, I was just looking forward to being an adult, to doing whatever I wanted to do. And really, I didn't realize that being an adult, there were so many responsibilities that came along with the territory. So as long as that's being taken care of, as long as I am contributing to our future, as long as we are uh, doing what's necessary, if we have money to buy something for ourselves that we really, really love to be able to live in the moment, then I am absolutely all for it. And then the second question, do you feel like some of your purchases um, you make are investments? When it comes to luxury goods and investments, um, I've said this before, I don't necessarily call it investments. Uh, I feel that most, some fashion houses have better resale values, uh, resale value than others. And, and I think Christina said it perfectly in one of her videos, unless I end up purchasing some of the Lux goodies and I have them in a temperature controlled room, you know, in the box with everything never been used, then I would, then I would consider that an investment. Uh, but for me, investments are stocks and bonds. Uh, for me, investments are definitely real estate. And um, I think that unless Chanel, for example, unless Chanel decides to increase the price to $15,000 for a classic flap, then I know that, that you know the ones that I did purchase are an investment because I will end up making a little bit of money on them. But for the most part, I don't consider them investments necessarily. I just feel that a lot of them have better resale value than others. So um, on some cases, you'll be able to make uh, most of your money back. If not, you'll be able to make a little money on it. Uh, but that's why I don't, uh, I don't really like to, um, 
associate looks goodies with that but I know that a lot of people end up uh, saying that uh, and how do I balance it all like I said before it's all a matter of just prioritizing and being extremely extremely responsible there's so many other aspects that have to happen before this even happens and um, I've said it before in other videos it's kind of like the handbag merry-go-round or if I have something sitting on my shelf uh, then that will you know then that'll put funds towards another handbag and I don't have to use money from the mad money you know what I mean uh, but I think it's all a matter of prioritizing and being extremely responsible with your items but to each their own you know who am I to tell anyone what they should or shouldn't do with their funds if someone has the money to buy a six thousand dollar handbag then by all means do it but I know that I see things a lot differently as uh, as an adult and I see things um, you know in a different light than how I used to when I was a teenager or when I was in my early 20s and I, you know, I'm okay with that because it makes, it just makes me feel a little bit better. It makes the, it makes the adult in me, because I definitely, I'm a kid at heart. Uh, it makes the adult in me appreciate the things that I have in my life uh, a lot more because I just, I work very, very hard in order to acquire them. So hopefully that was able to answer your question. All right, next question from Audrey Pang. What do you think about the Louis Vuitton double V bag? Been thinking about it between the Louis Vuitton Capucine bag. Which would you buy? This is a great question, and unfortunately, I don't have a picture of either one, but I will make sure and put a link on the description box below so you can check it out. And we have further eye candy. Uh, all right, so I love the Capucine. I've always been a big fan of it. I love the simplicity of it. Now, when it comes to the Louis Vuitton double V bag, it retails for $35.50 here in the States. It's available in four different colors, black, red, pink, and like an uh, like an eggshell off white. Uh, now this bag, um, oh man, this bag is absolutely stunning. And the funny thing is, is that usually when it comes to Louis Vuitton handbags with this type of price point, I don't want to see any type of canvas on it whatsoever. I prefer to see all leather uh, and this bag, this bag in particular, has a like a small parts a flap of, uh, of monogram canvas, but I really think that it adds to the beauty of the handbag. And this bag is just absolutely, inc it's stunning. It is absolutely stunning. I don't know what it is. Uh, I feel it's kind of like a rule breaker for me, as I said before, because I don't really, I don't want to see any type of canvas when it comes to the price point. But uh, I feel that if I was to get a all leather, for the most part, an all leather handbag from Louis Vuitton. A lot of you know that I've always said it would be the Montaigne in Noir in the emprunt leather, but I strongly feel that I, I would probably end up going for the double V. There is something about it. This bag is, like I said, it is stunning. It is incredibly versatile. I feel that it has a very old fashioned, um, like a very old fashioned, form to it, but it, it's also very modern in the sense that it's very versatile. It comes with an adjustable, detachable strap, if I'm not mistaken. It has compartments. It, it's, I mean, it's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful bag. I don't know what it is. And I feel that, I know that Louis Vuitton um, dubbed the Capucine as kind of like their version of the Chanel Jumbo, you know, like the, not the Jumbo, the classic flaps are for Chanel. Uh, I feel that it should really be the double V. I, I just think it is just exquisite. I think it's simple. I, I love the structure that it has, the organization that it has, the fact that it's versatile, the fact that it has the microfiber lining, and there's just something about the bag. And like I said before, I just, it just blows my mind because usually I'm just like, no, 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 we can't have any canvas for that price point. $35.50, I mean, that's, that's a pretty, <laughs> That's a pretty price tag that it has. And I don't want to see that canvas, but in this particular instance, I feel that it really adds to the beauty of it. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and there's multiple ways that it can, uh, that you can kind of, um, that you can, you know, the, the form of it completely, you can have the, the flap of monogram on the outside or the leather part. I don't know, but it is a stunning bag. Absolutely beautiful. So, um, which one would I buy? <laughs> I'd probably end up going for the double V between that one and the Capucine. Don't get me wrong. I love the Capucine. Again, I love the simplicity that it has, uh, but I think that I prefer the structure of the double V and just, you know, everything else that I, that I mentioned about it. So 
<laughs> for sure that one uh, but great question next question from Ernestina Ramirez what are your thoughts on the Chanel backpack I love the Louis Vuitton one but something about the Chanel ones that also gives me the butterflies uh, great question and uh, the Chanel backpacks they retail from anywhere the all leather like the urban spirit from 3400 to 3600 right around there um, I might be off by a couple hundred so don't quote me on them uh, they are available in the quilted and in the chevron detailing now I absolutely love the Chanel backpacks. I think that there's, um, I don't know what it is. Every time I see them on Instagram, every time I see, I see them on YouTube, I'm just so intrigued by them. Uh, I absolutely love the fact that they have the chain straps. I just feel that it just, it adds to the bag. Uh, but unfortunately for me and my lifestyle and the way that I used to be when I had a backpack, um, I feel that because they don't really have a whole lot of structure to them, I feel that it'll end up wearing a little more than I would like. Uh, I feel that the leather would end up uh, wrinkling again this is my own uh, my own personal taste uh, but I just I absolutely love them but when I did use a backpack I wanted something a little bit more carefree the uh, the Louis Vuitton one was perfect because it was mostly made up of canvas and it did and it did have the leather trimmings but when it comes to backpacks and when it comes to just I feel like it's a grab-and-go bag and I don't want to I don't want to baby it I don't want to do anything like that and because of the leather that some of the urban spirit backpacks are made from I just feel that especially the lambskin ones oh my goodness the lambskin one is stunning but it's one of those bags that I feel that I wouldn't want anything to happen to it I'd want to put it in like its own little protective bubble you know what I mean uh, so unfortunately it's not for me but I know exactly what you're talking about I do get those butterflies I do get that my heart sings when I see it uh, but again because of the the structure that it's lacking and the fact that I feel that I'll I'll probably end up damaging the bag in the first <laughs> in the first outing even though I am a very careful person I just feel that I wouldn't want a single solitary thing to happen to it. You know what I mean? But a lot of people rave about their backpacks. They they love them. They use them quite often. Uh, I've no I know a few people have been using them for travel uh, for travel and they've been loving them. Uh, and another thing is because they are so incredibly popular, they really add to the resale value of uh, of the backpacks as well. So that's another great aspect about it. But unfortunately for me and my lifestyle, it doesn't end up working out. But hopefully that was able to help. All right, next question from Bridget Flores. What's your secret to saving up for your Lux goodies? I uh, love this question. Now, when it comes to saving for Lux goodies, there's a lot of things that I really don't uh, use in my lifestyle that really allow me to put money towards the Lux goodies. For example, uh, I don't buy expensive clothing. I, I mean, I'll shop at I'll shop at H&M, I'll shop at Zara as long as it's on sale, I'll shop at Target for my clothing, I know I have some shorts that I absolutely love that I got at Target, um, I'll go to TJ Maxx, I'll go to Marshalls, I'm always, um, you know, I'm always very frugal in that sense when it comes to clothing, I don't get my nails done, I don't get my hair done really, um, for the most part I'll either have a friend dye my hair for me or I'll do it myself and then I butcher it, so, <laughs> so I save a lot of money that way, um, and and uh, so I don't really, you know, I don't really end up going to the hairdresser. Um, I don't buy expense. I, I don't buy coffee when I'm out and about very, very, very rarely. Uh, so like I said before, I think there's a lot of things that I cut out of my lifestyle. Not necessarily that it's something that I've been wanting. It's just not, it's not for me, like, um, going to get coffee every day or going to get my nails done. That's not something that, um, that really interests me. So handbags smell of the goods. And now slowly the footwear is starting to creep in on the, uh, creep in onto my collection. Um, that's what I prefer to spend my funds on that's what makes me uh, that's what makes me happier uh, so uh, not that there's anything wrong with getting your nails done getting your hair done getting coffee or anything like that but for me and my lifestyle the way that I am I'm extremely frugal with everything else so that I can uh, so that I can afford the the Lux goodies that I do have so I think that's the secret to it or at least in my case um, I don't um, I don't really <laughs> I don't think I have any other any other secret, I would share it with you guys. You know that. <laughs> uh, but hopefully that was able to give you a little bit of insight. Uh, all right, next question from Aaron Scotts. I know you love your car and you have an amazing handbag collection. I thank you so much. Uh, but what? But which are you more grateful for? <clears throat> Uh, which are which am I more grateful for? Okay, um, all right. So I do love my car. I have a lot of fun, you know, driving around in Olivia. Um, for those of you that don't know, I dubbed my car Olivia. I I, I just I feel she looks like an Olivia, uh, and. 
you know, my handbag collection, it has, I really love my bags. Uh, you know, it's, I've worked extremely hard to get, you know, to get the, the items that I do have in my collection. And I'm very, I'm very grateful for that. But when it comes to things that I'm most grateful for, it's, it's not the cars, it's not the handbags, it's nothing like that. For me, the things that I am most grateful for is number one, my family, our health, the fact that we have food on the table, and the fact that we have a house to live in. That's what, that's what really, that's what really, really makes my heart sing. You know, I love the bags, like I said before, and I know that my channel is mostly luxury, but it's just, you know, I just feel that when it comes to, to things that I'm most grateful for, it's not something that's necessarily tangible, uh, even though a house, you know, even though a house is, but it's just the well-being of my family and having my family. And I, there's nothing I wouldn't do for, for, for them. So that's what I, that's what I'm most grateful for. I don't know if that's the answer that you were looking for. Uh, but like I said before, I really do, I do appreciate the car. I do appreciate the hand goods, but for me, it's, it's my family and it's, our health and just being able to put food on the table every day. So, yeah, <laughs> I know it sounds super after school special, but that's, that's what's in my heart. So yeah. Uh, but great question. Uh, next one from Katie Doucette. Hopefully I said that correctly. I know you mentioned purchasing your Celine bags, regardless of the resale value, but do you have rules for bags you buy just because they make your heart sing? This is a fantastic question. Uh, now, you know, kind of like what you said with the Celine bags, I just went for them. I didn't really, it didn't matter to me, you know, if they have resale value or not. Um, and I think that the only rule that I have when it comes to purchasing bags that make my heart sing, I have to have the funds for it. I don't care if my heart is singing to the point where someone, you know, across the world can hear it, but if I don't have the funds for it, there is absolutely no way that I will buy it. Um, like I said before, that's kind of uh, talking about uh, what we were discussing earlier. I'm very, um, I don't like to have debt. A lot of you know that. Um, I won't charge a card just, or I won't charge an item just because I wanna have it in my collection because it's making my heart sing. Uh, I'm all for making the heart sing and I'm all for giving into that singing, but I have to, have to, have to have the funds for the bag. So that's, that's the only thing. <laughs> that's really the only thing. Other than that, if I have the funds for it, by all means, go for it. <laughs> uh, but great question. All right, next question from Cindy Arrington. Louis Vuitton of Instagram this AM showed the new patches option and showed a Neverfull with black leather. Yes! <laughs> what do you think? Uh, great question. I am very, very intrigued by the Louis Vuitton My World Tour collection. I know I touched base on this um, very briefly a few Minx Mondays ago, but uh, just like you said, you know, you see the monogram, you see the black trimming, and it's just like, yes, it's here, it's here, this is what we've been waiting for. Um, uh, personally, I am 50-50, and that's only because I haven't had the opportunity to go into the boutique and see the patches um, for myself. Uh, I would have been really, really excited, uh, even more so, had the Speedy Bandolier been a 25, not a 30, and that's really because I prefer the 25 for band or 25 size on me for uh, for crossbody. But I, I, I'm super, super intrigued. And the only reason why I'm 50-50 is because 50% of me is excited that it's going to have black trimmings. Uh, like I said before, very carefree. And the fact that it has monogram, I think that it will make for a very, like a beautiful pairing. Uh, and the other part of me, uh, I have seen some of the patches online and I've seen pictures of, of them on Instagram. And I'm not super, super crazy about the patches that you can, uh, that you can pick from. I thought that it was going to be some... I had a different... Um, I felt that it was going to be completely different, not so much what they ended up offering. But then again, like I said before, I haven't gone into the boutique. I haven't seen them in the flesh. And until I go into the boutique, then um, I think that's when it might, it might sway me one way or another. Uh, and that's really because I've learned that over the years, sometimes I'll say, oh, this bag isn't really for me. I don't really like it, blah, blah, blah. And then I go into the boutique and I check it out, you know, and I'm sitting there and I have it in my hot little hands and there might be a detail or, th or there might be an aspect that I didn't see online that I really, really do appreciate. So that's why I'm saying 50-50. 50% of me is excited and intrigued and the other 50% of me is kind of just like, oh man, I really wish it would have had this. I really wish it would have, um, you know, I, I really wish it would have been just a little bit more personalized, you know what I mean? Um, 
Yes, it's personalized in the sense that you can choose the patches that you want to put on it. But I thought, like, as I thought they were going to go in a completely different direction. But I am, I am stoked. I'm excited. I think that this collection will do extremely well uh, because of the fact that it does have the monogram with the black leather. I mean, that is just. Uh, <laughs> that is it. I feel, like I said in that previous video, I feel like we're getting closer and closer. It's going to get to the point where they're just going to say, you know what, we're going to make a monogram bag with black leather trim, no patches. And, you know, everyone and anyone can, can get it without having to put any patches on there. And I think I'm, <laughs> I think I'm secretly still waiting for that, for that to happen. Is that, is that bad? <laughs> Uh, but great question. Uh, all right, next one from Loa Christensen. Hopefully I said that correctly. <clears throat> are you, uh, what are your feelings on the Capucine bag from Louis Vuitton? Has it been on your wish list? And if it has, what color combination did you flirt with? Um, okay, so kind of like what I mentioned earlier, I love the Capucine at retail. The PM, the Capucine PM is probably the one that, um, actually the BB is really nice too. But the PM retails for $4,800 here in the States. And uh, the price does vary depending on the type of uh, leather details that you want. Some of them have snakeskin. And uh, you know me, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of, of snakes or snakeskin or anything like that. Uh, but you know, I do like the Capucine. And like I mentioned before, I think that it is a beautiful bag. I think that it's very, very simple. I love, uh, I just love the details that they have. Uh, once upon a time, I thought about putting it on my wish list, uh, and I flirted with the idea of the black one with the pink interior. Although I did see that there's also just a red one. It's just red red on the outside, red on the inside. And again, I'm still on the kick of a red handbag. I don't think that's, I don't think it's ever going to happen to be honest. Um, but I, I think it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous bag. The only downside to the Capucine that I have seen, um, in the past is that it's supposed to be, like I said before, their interpretation or their version of a, of a classic flap like Chanel does. Um, but for the 4,800, it doesn't have, it doesn't hold its resale value as well as I would have hoped. I feel that, uh, as this bag kind of gains popularity, um, I think that it will really end up helping the, the resale value. But for the most part, when you look on the, uh, when you look on the pre-love market, they're 50% off, uh, you know, 60% off retail price. Uh, so I think that for the price point that they have and the fact that they don't hold their resale value, I think that that's kind of, uh, what really just kind of takes me back as far as, you know, adding one to my collection. Um, but as I mentioned before, I think I would probably get the double V over the Capucine just because I'm that crazy about it. <laughs> it's just, it's, just a, it's such a pretty, pretty bag. Uh, but hopefully that was able to answer your question. All right, next question from Miss JM. Could you show us how you store or display your small leather goods and anything we should or shouldn't do with them? Is there a possibility of color transfer from leather lined bags, Chanel in particular? For example, do you avoid using your rose ballerine on prong key pouch in your jumbo or in your minis? Uh, these are fantastic questions. Uh, all right, so with the first one, can I show you how I store or display my small leather goods? Uh, on the unit behind me, it's six different shell, it's six different uh, levels. And up here behind my toiletry, case from Louis Vuitton. I have all of my Chanel and my Louis Vuitton small leather goods in their dust bags kind of in a row. I just like to kind of like what I mentioned last week. I like to have everything, um, you know, have its own little proper place. So they're all outside of the boxes in their dust bags. Um, as far as things that I would recommend uh, people not to do is not to keep their small leather goods inside of the boxes, kind of like the same thing with handbags. You want to make sure that the leather is breathing. And I'm going to give you guys an example because my Joseph wallet that I've talked about uh, many times on my channel. I did at one point have all three canvas prints in this um, in this wallet. I had the Demi Azor, the Demi Ben, and now I just have the monogram left. I have since sold the other two. And that's because way back in the day, I used to put all of my small leather goods inside of the boxes. I, I preferred the way that it looked. I felt that it was a lot, um, I felt that it was a lot cleaner. It seemed to be a lot sleeker. And I loved having, uh, <laughs> I ended up labeling each box so I knew what was in each one. Uh, and I love the way that it looked. However, as time went by because I kept them in the boxes in the dust bag in the bo in the dust bag in the boxes I noticed that my Josephine wallets had bubbling 
Let's, there we go. Do you see that? This is the removable coin patch from the Josephine wallet and it has bubbling all on the inside. So this is leather lined. It is canvas on the outside, but is leather lined and you can see that I have bubbling all the way throughout. It happened to all three of my Josephine wallets. Uh, and Louis Vuitton couldn't fix this because it is a very uh, thin, it's just pretty much leather and then you have canvas on the other side. They couldn't fix it so I ended up having to replace every single pouch. And after that happened, it really took away from it really took away from the joy of using the wallet. I don't know what it was, to be honest. It was just kind of like, oh man, I, I ruined it myself. What, you know, what did I do? I did talk about this uh, ages ago on a previous Minx Monday, and I know some people had said that they also experienced bubbling, but they didn't have any of their small leather goods inside of the boxes. So um, I'm not 100% sure if this was a, a defect from, you know, manufacturing or anything like that. But as far as what happened in my experience, I did have them in the dust bag. I did have them in the box and I ended up having all of that bubbling go through. So um, I ended up keeping this one and I have the replacement for it as well, which is how I use it. So this one, I just kind of, like I mentioned in my, um, in my summer essentials video, I just kind of throw things in there and I, I don't really give it much thought because it's already damaged, if you will. Uh, but that's the only thing that I can say is just make sure that your items are outside of the boxes so that they can breathe, whether it's Chanel, whether it's Hermes, whether it's Gucci, Prada, Louis Vuitton, you name it. Even if it's, you know, even if it does have very, very minimal leather, you want to make sure that the leather is able to breathe. Uh, so to each their own, you know, I'm not, I'm not telling you you should or you shouldn't do it, but I would just advise people to uh, to take their items out of the of the boxes and like I said before trust me I I love the way that it looked in the boxes right now I feel like it's a mess I feel like it's just kind of all over the place uh, but I haven't had any bubbling since I took them all out. <laughs> so learn from my mistakes. Uh, and okay, have I had any color transfer on items such as my Chanel Classic Flaps because it does have this gorgeous burgundy uh, interior? I have not. I have used my Rose Ballerine key pouch in this multiple times. I've used the Chanel Turquoise um, Caviar Wallet. I've used a lot of my lighter colored small leather goods in here and I have never ever experienced any type of color transfer. I'm not trying to say that it wouldn't happen, but in my experience, I, I haven't had that happen, uh, which makes me very, very happy. And I was, I was, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I thought that it would definitely end up rubbing off. I thought that I would end up having color transfer, but so far, no, no problems whatsoever. And I even used it with, um, with my mini pochette, my Tahitian collection as well. And I haven't had any issues. So hopefully that was able to help. Next question from Far S. I recently got a Neverfull MM with red interior. I notice when I drive, the sun hits all the time, which got me wondering if the bags are exposed to the sun, will that affect the color over time? This is a fantastic question. And I would have to say to a certain extent, Yes. Uh, I think that if you have a handbag that is in one spot, let's say in your house, or it's in front of a window that gets quite a bit of sunlight, whether you're out and about and the, and the sun is always uh, on your handbag, or I know sometimes people leave their handbags inside of their cars when they're out and about as well, um, and because of the sunlight coming through, I think that that would really make for a dull canvas, and I feel that it would also end up um, making the lining get dull. And I think that it would have to take quite a bit of, you know, it would have to be hours upon hours of continuously happening in order for it to dull. Um, but for example, if you are commuting and um, your commute is maybe an hour, hour and a half every day and uh, the sun is constantly hitting your back, I don't think that would have too much of an effect on it. But I think that if it was numerous, numerous hours that it ended up sitting in the sun, then I really do think it would. Uh, perfect example, one of my girlfriends, uh, she was staying at the shore, this was like years ago, uh, she was staying at the shore and she was using her Neverfull MM in the Damia Ben canvas. Uh, and she ended up taking this Neverfull to the beach every single solitary day. I think I saw her in September or in October. And when I saw her, she still had her bag because she, lo she absolutely loved the bag. Uh, and the bag seemed to, it wasn't as vivid. The colors weren't as bright as far as the canvas goes. And the lining actually, instead of it being that bright, bright red that I absolutely love, uh, it was more of like a, like a red orange, like it completely changed color. It was, it just seemed complete. It, it seemed so incredibly bizarre uh, to the point where I even asked her, I said, 
is this the same bag that you had before? And she said, yeah, you know, I took it to the beach every single day. And she would be at the beach for like, I don't know, six or seven hours every single day for three and a half months. So just in that period of time, but because she was at the beach for so long, it really had, it really took an effect to the color of the canvas as well as the color of the, of the lining. So that's, um, that's why I feel that over, ex over an extended period of time, I think that it would end up dulling it. But, uh, let's say that you were, uh, let's say that you're commuting to work and, um, the sun is hitting your back. I don't think that that would have, uh, I don't think that that would end up, you know, doing anything to your back. I feel that it would have to be maybe three, four hours every single day of just constant uh, sunlight hitting the bag. Um, there's also another, uh, something else that I wanted to mention, and that's Dami Azor. Dami Azor, because it does have the, um, you know, kind of like the, the white checkers with the blue, I know that sometimes uh, they might be a little more off-white, a little more yellow than others. I feel that because of how light the canvases with Dami Azor, that's another one that if sunlight ends up hitting it, it will end up having a yellowing effect on it. Same thing with uh, Vernie. I talked about this years ago on my wear and tear uh, for Vernie. And if it ends up hitting the sun, if it ends up sitting in the sun, especially the lighter colors, they end up yellowing over time. So yes, the sun is fantastic, but it does have, uh, it does cause some type of toll onto the handbag if it's left, um, if it's left, you know, hitting the beautiful sunshine rays <laughs> uh, for a long period of time. So hopefully that was able to answer your question. Uh, all right, and the last question from Elsa B. I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic. I've seen some YouTubers selling their bags recently. It's like we suddenly realize we're spending too much money. I love this community, but it's addictive and influencers do their job showing us all we can get, but it's never enough. I can't believe there's people making unboxings every week or every other week. I do respect them, but it doesn't seem normal. How do you keep your finances healthy and what are your recommendations? I absolutely love this question. And uh, how do I keep my finances healthy? Kind of what, like what I mentioned before, I am very frugal on certain aspects of my life. Uh, and, you know, I, I've discussed this before as well. When it comes to as far as, you know, what I can financially do, uh, it's kind of like the handbag merry-go-round. I feel that if there's a bag that I'm not using that's just sitting there, I would much rather, you know, sell the bag and put that put those funds towards something else. So it's kind of like the one in, one out type of situation. Um, I don't have the financial possibility to keep every bag that I don't use in my collection. I think that they're beautiful and I think they're fantastic and they might have worked out for my, uh, for my lifestyle at one point or another, but tastes always change. So that's why if, um, you know, for me, something usually ends up leaving my collection or, um, you know, I end up saving up for, for an item if I really want to add it to my collection. Something else that I end up doing is that I do a ton of research on the bags that I add to my collection nowadays. Uh, once upon a time, I just ended up buying bags because I wanted to buy bags because I, I liked them. They didn't always end up working out for me. I lost quite a bit of money when I would go to resell them. Uh, and that's really because either the bag wasn't popular or it just, you know... It, just because some of these luxury goods are expensive doesn't always necessarily mean that they will have the best resale value. And I learned that the hard way. Most definitely I did. Uh, so that's why I'm so apprehensive as to what I add to my collection. Now I have to do a ton of research. The bag has to, the bag absolutely has to suit my lifestyle. Uh, even if it makes my heart sing, if I'm just getting it just to get it as I used to when I was younger, that doesn't work out for me anymore. Um, because I want to be able to use the bag and I want, I want the bag to be versatile. And a lot of you know, I always talk about versatility. I know, I know, I could talk your ear off about uh, versatility, but I want to be able to use the bag in various aspects of my lifestyle. I don't, I don't want to just use a bag for weddings. I don't want to just use a bag for dinners. I want to be able to incorporate every bag as much as I can so I have that rotation going. Uh, so I know a lot of people, as I said before, do the handbag merry-go-round. Something Before something comes in, something goes out, or if something comes in, something has to go out afterwards. So it's doing research, ensuring that I'm, that I'm making the right decisions for my lifestyle, making the right uh, purchases that, you know, that will end up suiting me more than anything, uh, you know, and some of these, some of the bags out there are absolutely fantastic. They are fabulous. They are just, I mean, they, they make you drool type of thing, but if it doesn't work out, then, 
you know, as beautiful as it is, it's not something that would be in the cards for me. Um, but that's, that's the only thing that I can say. And I, and I know from experience, it can get, it can get crazy, you know? And I say that because as I mentioned earlier, when I was younger, I just, I thought it was the cool thing to do. <laughs> just buy bags, just buy this, just because, you know, there was no rhyme or reason as to why I did that. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. So please don't misunderstand what I'm saying, but I just, I see things differently. I, I feel that, I, I personally feel that I'm very responsible when it comes to what I add to my collection because I view it a little differently uh, than I, you know, than I once did. And we all learn from, you know, from, and I don't call them mistakes either. I, I've said this before. I don't call them mistakes. I don't call them regrets or anything like that because it has brought me to who I am today and it has brought me to appreciate or to to pinpoint what it is that I look for in my collection. So hopefully that was able to help. Uh, all right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. You had some amazing questions this week and I hope that I was able to give some insight and give you guys a little bit of information as well. And uh, this week's lineup, I don't know what I'm gonna do, to be honest. I have a couple tag videos that I have to do. Um, I wanna do Sophie's, I wanna do L's, um, and I also wanna do a couple of reviews. I'm all over the place, <laughs> I'm all over the place, and I can't seem to, to figure out what I'm gonna do. But I think for tomorrow, I will be doing a tag video, and then we'll see what happens for the rest of the week. But hopefully you guys stick around and you guys um, like what you see. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on that red button down below and I will see you all tomorrow and as always make it a fabulous day or not the choice is yours have a great day you guys